Good morning, my friends, and welcome to the 10 Minute Book Talk, where three best selling authors talk all things bookish with you for 10 short and sweet minutes every week. I am joined today by my fellow wonderful author, Rachel Linden, who is sitting there like with her book, The Magic of Lemon Drop Kai, next to her, which you should absolutely be reading. Now, we are also joined by the disembodied voice of Catherine Ray. But I am here. <laughs> Brave, Catherine. I'm waving. <laughs> Catherine's been having a little internet trouble, so we just have her voice today, but we are her voice always has something meaningful to say, so we're glad she is here. But you know what? We are really glad to have with us today Jane Kirkpatrick, whose new book, Beneath the Bending Skies, is an absolute page turner. Um, Jane, we're so glad you were able to join us today on the 10-Minute Book Talk. Please tell us a little bit about your new book. Well, it's one of my uh, historical women um, books set in the West, and um, it's about Molly Sheehan Renan, and she grew up during the Montana kind of territory of gold mining and had a struggle with trying to honor her father and at the same time find her own way, um, especially after she fell in love with her father's former best friend. That's drama. Yes. <laughs> wow. Well, I, I was fascinated that this is your 40th book. Congratulations about that. But again, a pioneer women in the West returning to the West in this time period. What intrigues you so much to bring you back again and again? I think it's the strength of them. I'm always asking questions in my mind about how did you, um, how did they, um, where did they draw their strength from? You know, was it, was it their faith? Was it the arts? Was it the landscape? Um, and, you know, I grew up reading the Laura Engels Wilder books and the pioneering books and then spent 27 years just kind of pioneering myself. And I found I asked that same question all the time. Um, so it's, I think it's trying to answer that question about in times of trial or what I call wilderness places, where do we draw our strength from? Mm. Oh, that's beautiful. That is beautiful. This is inspirational fiction. Is that correct? Is that the genre right. set in the old West? So sort of historical inspirational fiction. And I'm just curious where, uh, where did the inspiration particularly for this story from Molly's story come from? I, I just, I love to read uh, memoirs from particularly of pioneering women. And I read her memoir uh, called Girl from the Gulches about, I don't know, 10 or 12 years ago. And I was just really intrigued with this relationship with her father. She loved him dearly. Um, she, her mother had died when she was young. Um, and yet, even from the stories she told in her memoir, he was very controlling. And, and I just, um, I was struck with how she tried to navigate that. And then later when she married and her father really never approved of the marriage, how she again navigated that what I call the sandwich generation where she is trying to you know make peace with her parents and at the same time have her own family and her own children that she needed to pay attention to and in the latter part of her life she and her husband spent uh, years on the Flathead Reservation in Montana her husband was an Indian agent and um, and she became beloved there she beloved she loved the people that she lived with and worked with and the uh, the actual title of my working title was called Always an Open Door. And she was just so hospitable. And, and so that intrigued me about her too, is about writing about an ordinary woman. And at the same time, one who, who found great joy in cooking and giving and, and, you know, trying to make her husband's life better and live well among her neighbors. So I, I just, I don't know, felt like the world was ready for that kind of story, you know, and, um, and I was ready for that kind of story too. Mm. You know, I've read so many of your books and I've enjoyed them no end. And what I, some of the things I love about you is, you know, you have characters who are very much women of their times, but right. they're also very strong and they, and they often push the boundaries a little bit to find their own way. Sometimes they actually push the boundaries a whole lot to find their own way. So, um, uh, you know, obviously you read widely to find these characters, but tell me about your research process. Uh, 
are there sources that you go back to again and again? Because you've been researching this time period for a long time. So where is your kind of your first stop and, and where does it lead you in your research? Well, often the beginning is in a footnote or two from some other research book that I'm reading to do research for another story. Um, and so then I find this really intriguing footnote. Um, one of the books I wrote was called One More River to Cross. And it came from a footnote that said, this man said, today I found an old cabin and there were uh, 17 children, seven women and James Murphy. And they spent the winter in the Sierras. And I'm like, who are these people? What, you know, what were they doing there? Um, and it turns out they were in the same Donner Party pass, but a year and a half earlier. And they, and the only reason I could find them was because he mentioned the man's name because the women's name are really difficult to find. Mm -hmm. um, and then I can't, that, so I have to try to find who are the men involved with these women. And that's where I begin actually with the research. Virginia Woolf said women's history must be invented both uncovered and made up. Mm -hmm. so, um, so I'm looking at that and I go to, um, you know, if I'm writing about an early physician, there's a, a huge um, medical, you know, research center back in back East. Um, if I found out that their faith was like Methodist, I can go to Philadelphia and get the Methodist uh, records about some of these people. Um, so it's just, it's bits and pieces. And I try to make a timeline of their life. I'm trying to identify what were the pivotal points in their life um, and what brought those about and how might they have felt. You know, I, I like biographies because it tells you what someone did and when they did it. But a novel allows you to explore why they did it and how they might have felt. So, you know, that I have to switch from the history to what and why to um, or from what and when, but to why and the feelings. Hmm. That, you know, that's what I love about historical fiction. It does allow us to kind of answer or at least create conjecture about the why behind people. Right. That's such an important point. Right. And you know, um, as you're getting, oh, I'm sorry, go ahead, Jane. No, 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 go ahead. Uh, well, I, I just think this is such another of your wonderful books. Honestly, friends, I have read so many of Jane Kirkpatrick's books. You, you can't go wrong. There's no bad decision in any of those. But before we wrap up with you, Jane, and thank you for being here with us, I want to ask you, what's bringing you joy today, my friend? Well, I happen to be at a trade show of booksellers from around the Northwest. Um, I'm doing a signing there tonight. And last night, um, it was about children's books. And so what's bringing me joy today are the children's books that I picked up because I think that's some of the most powerful writing being done today because children won't let you take 300 pages, you know, like I take. Um, and so they, I think that they can just uh, attach our soul. And uh, there's a new rendition of the Three Billy Goats Gruff and the author and illustrator were there and they read, they read this book with the great, you know, with because picture books get reread many, many times, and so it's always a new story. So that's what's bringing me joy is just children's books and how powerful they are. That sounds like a very good thing to be bringing you joy. And what's bringing us joy today, my friends, is Jane Kirkpatrick's new book, Beneath the Bending Skies. Jane, thank you so much for taking time to be with us here on the bit 10 minutes. Oh, exactly. And friends, thank you for taking this 10 minutes to be with us. Go pick up Jane's book and come back here next week because we have all the best authors here if you hadn't noticed that already here on the 10 Minute Book Talk. So we'll see you next week. Thanks a lot, guys. And Catherine's waving. I'm waving. Thank you. <laughs> Bye.